Today's lesson is Chapter 12, Lesson 3, Energy Conversions. So, uh, actually, no, it's Conservation of Energy. We did Energy Conversions last time, and what is energy the time before that? So, Conservation of Energy. You're going to come back and watch this video. There are four objectives today. You should be able to explain how energy is conserved within a closed system, explain the law of conservation of energy, give examples of how thermal energy is always a result of an energy conversion, and explain why perpetual motion is impossible. So in a previous lesson, I had you take your hands and I had you rub them together really, 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 really fast. Okay, that is a form of friction. You've got forces, or a force that opposes motion between two surfaces that are touching. Another example of this would be for a roller coaster car to move. Energy must be used to overcome the friction between the car's wheels and the track, because it's like your hands moving together. So as a result, not all of the car's potential energy changes into kinetic energy, and not all of the car's kinetic energy changes back into potential energy. So we've got some energy that's kind of missing right here. So where did that energy go? Did it just disappear? Can that happen? So let's think about that for a second and let's look at this roller coaster. So the potential energy is at the greatest at the top of the very first hill. So when you get on a roller coaster, that's going to be your high speed. You're climbing, 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 climbing. You're storing up gravitational potential energy. So then when you finally allow gravitational uh, potential energy to pull you down, now you have kinetic energy. Kinetic energy at the bottom of the first hill is less than the potential at the top was. And then as we continue on, the potential at the top of the second hill is less than the kinetic energy and the potential energy from the first hill. Well, why is that? Think about your hands. Some of that energy is changed into thermal energy. So heat. Because if you keep doing your hands together, it's going to get really, really hot. And that's the same thing that's going to happen with these roller coaster wheels. So you are not losing energy. Actually, the law of conservation of energy states, and you need to know this, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It simply changes forms. I'm going to say that again. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It simply changes forms. So in the roller coaster, we had a closed system. That means it's a group of objects that transfer energy only to each other. It's not getting energy from anything else. We're not plugging it into the electric, electricity in the wall like we would a blender or hair dryer. So energy, as we've learned, can be converted from one form to another. But all of the different forms of energy in a closed system always add up to the same total amount of energy because energy cannot be created or destroyed. It changes forms. For example, we have the light bulb, and we know that we have energy conversions taking place in this light bulb. Some of the electrical energy, like they're showing you here, this electrical energy is carried through the wire. Some of it is converted into thermal energy. 
That's what makes the bulb feel warm when you touch it. Now we've gotten better with technology and making light bulbs so they don't give off as much thermal energy as they used to. And then some of that energy is converted into the light energy, which is what we want to happen in a light bulb. But if you have a lot of lights on in a room, especially back 10, 15 years ago before we got better technology, the more lights meant the more thermal energy, so the more heat that you had in that room. And all of that thermal energy is wasted because every single energy conversion that takes place, there's always a little bit of thermal energy. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Anytime one form of energy is converted into another form, some of the original energy always gets converted into thermal energy. The thermal energy due to friction that results from energy conversions is not usually useful energy, so it's wasted. So let's think about perpetual motion here for a second. Because a lot of people have tried to invent perpetual motion machines. And this is a machine that would run forever and ever and ever without adding any energy to it. But what did we just learn? Is that possible? No. Perpetual motion machines are impossible because some waste thermal energy always results from energy conversions. Always. So no perpetual motion machines. So I said just a minute ago we had made light bulbs more efficient so they don't let off as much thermal energy. And we are constantly trying to improve the efficiency of machines. And this is, this is important because greater efficiency results in less waste. And less waste or less energy is wasted, then that's less energy that's needed to operate that machine. Therefore, when your parents pay the electrical bill every month, think about all the energy that you waste in your house. And they're having to pay for that. So the more efficient we are, the more efficient technology we have, the less energy that is quote unquote wasted. So our next lesson will be 12.3. On the slide after this, you have the Bill Nye Friction video, which will be for tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get to that though. So um, this will be tomorrow's video. And then our next lesson after the video will be 12.4 energy resources.